So in one second, this got pushed directly to the neighboring spot, the piece next door. In one second, this got pushed, sorry, in how much time did this get pushed to the, the same distance, to the, next, the piece next door? And the answer is in one second. Everything steps the way I've drawn it. One liter mo over here moved from the left to the right so that it's right next to where it was. This is one liter. If one liter moves through here to there, then one liter that was right there got pushed over to the right, and one liter that was right here got pushed over to the right. Because it's incompressible. Every time you move part of the fluid one, if you move one liter of the fluid through the pipe in a second, every other piece of the pipe has to move one liter in that second because the pipe is full of water, so the water all moves at once. So if this is one liter that moved that far, this is one liter that moved that far in the same time. And so what I was looking for was, if you, th I hope that you, if you thought about it, you would be okay with uh, the water on the right is moving much faster. The reason it's moving faster is because it's a smaller cross section. If you have ever found yourself in a slow moving stream that was approaching a canyon, so that it got really narrow, you would suddenly find yourself moving a lot faster. And it suddenly gets dangerous. To move the same amount through a small space, the, th the, object, the stuff has to be moving faster. Any questions about that one? Yeah. Uh, uh, the point before it goes, for the second half, before it goes to the smaller cross-section, would it be like slower to get through, or how does it work out? The point just before the cross-section goes down? Yeah. Uh, Basically, this is a constant cross-section up to here. Yeah. So all the water along here is going to be moving at constant speed. Here, the cross-section starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So right here, the water is going to start moving faster and faster and faster. And by the time it gets to here, it's going to be a constant speed the whole time. Because again, the cross-sectional area is constant. So what, what you need, the current, the water that flows into something every second, has got to be the same as the water that flows out. And You can check that the units work. You can also check this picture and see that it makes sense. That the current is the cross-sectional area times the speed. If the current is going to be the same at those two places, on the left, the cross-sectional area is big, so the speed's going to be small. On the right, the cross-sectional area is small, and so the speed of the fluid's going to be big because the current is the same in both of them. Whatever water goes in, every second one liter comes in from the left, and one liter gets pushed out the right. So that's how you tell kinetic energy. Gravitational potential energy, the indicator is height. Kinetic energy, you know the indicator is speed, but this tells you something else. To get the speed, you need to know the cross-sectional area. So the cross-sectional area of the tube becomes the indicator that you needed. If it gets smaller, the speed goes up. That means the kinetic energy density went up. This says it in a slightly different way. Uh, it's, it's just as important, but it says it in a slightly different way. This one is just what I wrote down before. A1, V1 is A2, V2. Whatever fluid flows through this part of the pipe also flows through that part of the pipe in the same amount of time. So. Here, because the cross-sectional area is big, the speed is small. And here, because the cross-sectional area is really small, the speed is high. <clears throat> what do I say about the current here? 
I1. Current comes in one liter every second. I1, what is that equal to compared to this over here? There's a current two and a current three. What would you say about those two? Add them together. Whatever current goes into one comes out two and three. Do you think they're equal, two and three? No. No reason for them to be equal. In fact, if you ask me, three is probably going to have a bigger, bigger current. There's no reason for them to be equal. To decide how big one or the other is, you have to know a little bit more about what's going on in this problem. So this is another question for you. But first I want to tell you another piece of our, an, another piece of the situation that we're working with. The equation I derive for you is really only true if the fluid, if one piece of the fluid is flowing the same as the other piece. Suppose I have a pipe like that and I have water flowing through it. The water will flow along what's called a streamline. This is really our equation here. I didn't give, I didn't let you uh, see the pieces of that that are important, but that equation I wrote down is, is only true for points along a streamline. It's not correct for turbulent flow. So it's not correct when there's that kind of complicated flow. And so we are not going to talk about turbulence. That's a horrendously complicated problem. That in some sense, it's not really solved yet. Um, so everything that I talked about before was for uh, was for steady state flow along a streamline. Now we also talked about jumping into a pool. A pool isn't, there's no water in a swimming pool is not flowing at all. So there aren't any streamlines. So every piece in the swimming pool that's connected to the other pieces of the water, as long as it's part of that swimming pool, um, all pieces are points that you, where you can use the model. So to get back to this question, if you have a different fluid, then you need to do a different model because the densities have changed. If you have a different motion, say there's some static water and right nearby is some moving water, then those are two different fluid systems and you have to use this equation, the steady state fluid flow, for each of them, not for the two together. Anytime you have a single connected fluid system that's in the same state of motion, then you can use this model for that. For instance, here's some water. All of this right here is the same water system. I can go from one point to another without going through any other fluid system. So that water is one fluid system. And you can use this equation to talk about uh, this steady state flow equation, to talk about this water, even though the water's not flowing. The reason, actually, the fact that the water's not flowing makes it a lot easier. There's no kinetic energy changes. There's no current. There's no pump in the problem. All sorts of things suddenly are zero. <coughs> this problem right here shows three cups. Each of them have been immersed uh, top downward into water. So this is the opening of the cup down at the bottom, and it's immersed in water. It's captured some air up there, and this water goes up into the cup a little bit. This water, this cup, when, they, when it was flipped over, probably already had some water in it. And so the water in there goes up to here. And this cup, when it was flipped over, probably had some oil in it because this water goes up to here and then you go to oil and then above that is an air pocket. So what I'd like you to do is count up the number of fluid systems you see in this problem. So if you wanted to solve for all pressures at all locations, you would have to write down this steady state equation how many times? How many separate fluid systems are there? 
talk about it all you want. 